All right, Lee, without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, start creating our project. I'm using the Xcode here, which is a beta version. Go to about Xcode, and this is the first beta of Xcode 13, as you can see here. Um, if you are watching this in the future and there is a newer version of Xcode uh, beta, make sure you download the latest version or maybe the proper version of Xcode 13 is out. If you are really watching this around in September, October, make sure you download the, uh, you use the real version of the Xcode. Uh, anyhow, you should always get the latest version of available Xcode from Apple. So um, when we start our Xcode, we create a new project. Uh, we can uh, we have to select the iOS, choose the application here, click on next. I'm going to call my application. Uh, let's call this loan, and I'm going to say CD for core data because this is what we are going to use for um, saving our uh, loan information. Um, you could call it something like Loan Tracker or something else, but uh, since I have one application called Loan Tracker on my computer, I don't want to mix them. So let's call this Loan uh, CD. And uh, under the theme, you have your own name here and uh, organization identifier is usually your reverse DNS. What is important here is interface. Make sure it's SwiftUI, not Storyboard. Language is Swift. And then I have ticked here use core data because we are going to use core data and host it uh, in CloudKit, which is actually helping us to synchronize whatever we have in our core data on our iCloud. So uh, step Xcode will take care of for us and add some boilerplate code once we create the application. I click next. It will ask you where you want to save it. And I'm going to save it on my desktop and click create. All right, so it's our application and let's see what Xcode actually gave us. So we have this loan CD app file, which actually imported our persistent container because we have chosen that we want to use the core data. And also it adds the persistent uh, container to our environmental object for our managed object context. So we have access to our persistent controller throughout our application. So we're injecting in the top level of our application. Um, then if we go see, check out the content view file, you can see there is a lot of uh, things here added for us, um, which basically is a small project to add some items to core data. Let's actually run this on an iPhone 12 Pro simulator to see what our application looks like. And while Xcode is running the application, let's see what functions here we have. So we have a delete function that helps us delete our items from our core data. And we have add item that helps us create fun uh, item in our core data. And this part here is actually our view. And uh, we have a list that shows all the items from our core data. And we have on delete on it so we can actually delete the item. And the toolbar is basically a button there, which has an edit button, which will allow us to go into delete mode. And also an add button that will create a new item. Also at the top here, you can see we are getting access to our environment object and getting hold of the view context, which is our manage object context. And this part here is basically loading the core data items, that is how it's called here, into our uh, list view. So let's see what we have here. This looks like it's still running. It hasn't opened the application yet. So let's get back to our file here and look another file here called persistence. I will close this left panel so we have more space here. And this persistence uh, is a struct. We import the core data and this basically sets up some uh, default things for us in order to use our uh, core data here and create some uh, dummy items. Uh, this is where we load our core data file, 
which if you look here is this one, which Xcode has created for us. It's usually create, holds the application uh, name here. And you can see that we have one entity, which is just item and it has a timestamp, which is type of date. We're going to obviously change this and uh, add our, uh, our own uh, two entities. Let me see why this is not really working. Right, so our preview loaded, which is actually the information in our preview is coming from our persistent container here. This is the part for our preview. Uh, but we are not really interested in this preview. What we want to do is actually try out our application. So I'm going to get rid of this uh, if iOS have the edit button there because we have this on delete action which anyway shows allows us to delete items when we swipe on the cells. So let's uh, get rid of that and run our application one more time on the simulator. And yeah, there is one more thing I want to do, uh, wrap all this in navigation view. Now let's cut everything out from here and put it inside our navigation view and run one more time. Now we have our plus button and if I click that it's going to call our add item function and if we check on add item function it just creates a new item which is a type of item using our uh, view context because this is a core data item it's not so a simple class or struct so we need to initialize it this way and then we just add a timestamp of the current date so let's see if I click on add it says item add and we have the date and the time of each time I click on add item and uh, it automatically gets uh, updated thanks to this uh, fetch request part which uh, basically is linking our core data to our view and every time there is some uh, new item or even we can slide one to delete if something changes in our core data it automatically refreshes our view and our list here that is displaying our items in the for each section you can see that for each items which is the array here it holds array of items we use each item and then we create a text which shows on these timestamps. So let's go ahead and do some cleanup because most of this code here we don't really need. I'm going to, uh, let's see what we have here. Um, let's start from our persistence container. And first thing I'm going to get rid of is this struct preview because it's not really necessary here. So we have our singleton here, uh, which is a persistent uh, persistence controller. And we have access to our container. And as you can see, this is NS persistent cloud kit container. And the reason it's called cloud kit is because remember we ticked the cloud kit uh, tick when we were creating the application. So otherwise it would be just called NS persistent container without the cloud kit which uh, basically would save everything on our local device only without syncing it to the cloud kit. And the same goes here. Once you see the cloud kit, basically if you haven't ticked the cloud kit uh, inside the, uh, the time we were creating the application, by just renaming the two items here, the cloud kit putting in the name, will help you to start saving your items from your local core data into a cloud kit as well. And uh, what is very important here when we are initializing our container is make sure that the name here is matching the name here, which is our core data stack. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So you cannot just come and copy paste this part to a different project. You should make sure that the name here matches with the our core data stack. Um, this part, I'm going to get rid of it. Um, here we are actually loading our container. So uh, once we load and the, there is an error, we without our core data container, we don't want to continue 
in our application because there is nothing we can do. That's why we just throw a fatal error and application crashes and we just print the error. Okay, um, here we, in this init function, later on we are going to add uh, to save to cloud. Uh, this will do on a later stage. But um, right now, let's go ahead and uh, check also our core data file here because we don't want to use entities. Instead, we are going to use our own uh, entities instead of this item. So what I'm going to do is you can delete this and uh, create new one by clicking on the add entity button or you can uh, just tap on it and rename this. I'm going to rename it loan. And uh, attributes of our loan, our loan is going to have a name and it's gonna be type of string. Then you can click on this add button to add another attribute and this is going to be amount. This is the amount we are going to take. So it's gonna be a double then our loan needs an ID, which is, let's put a string as well. And finally, we need to put the dates. So we need to, to take a starting date of the loan and the due date of our loan. So let's um, call this start date which is a type of date and then our loan will have due date which is a type of date as well amount let's rename it actually to total amount but this will be our total loan all right uh, we have all these uh, five attributes for our loan. Let's add another entity. And each loan is going to have a payment. So we call this payment. So every time we insert a payment uh, for our loan, we are going to create a payment object and um, this will be saved uh, as a payment for that specific loan. So in our payment, let's select now, we're going to add attributes for our payment. So what we want to have is an amount because we want to know how much we paid. This is going to be double. Then we want to know when we paid this. So let's call it date. And this type of a date. Each payment is going to have his ID. Uh, let's put this a string. And in order to understand which payment belongs to which loan, let's give it an attribute of loan ID, which is going to be a string, right? So these are our uh, two entities, loan and payment. We also can create connection between them. The easiest way to create connection between your two entities, if you go to the editor style here, it opens like a map here, and you can take uh, one uh, entity control click and drag to another entity, which creates a connection here. Once you do that, you can jump back to your editor. And if you select one of the entities here, like loan, we have relationship. And this relationship, we're going to call these payments, plural. And the reason we call it payments is that each loan can have multiple payments inside, but each payment can have only one loan. So let's call it loan. Just by adding an extra S there, it doesn't help to understand that it's uh, one too many connection. So in order to tell this our to our Xcode that this is one too many connection, when we select our payments, we are going to open on the right side panel. And here we have So it will be too many here. And you can see that 
here we have two arrows at the end of the line and here is one arrow. So each loan may have multiple payments, but each payment can have only one loan. So you can click on editor and get back to our uh, normal view. And we can close the right side panel here. We don't need it. Uh, so we can get some extra screen there. And now let's uh, have a look at our persistence file. We have removed all the unnecessary code from here. And uh, same thing we're going to do with our uh, content view here. I'm actually going to rename this file. So right click on our struct name, go to refactor, rename. And this is going to be our loan view. Loans view. Okay, you can see that the file name here was renamed. All the text here is renamed apart from this. Of course, this was commented out. And here, what is most important is this is also renamed. Otherwise, if we had here uh, the old name, it would try to uh, create the first view of our application, the content view, which wouldn't exist and it wouldn't work.